One of the most controversial aspects of the creation of Hawa, of Eve, is what was she created from? And there are some very condescending things that are said about Eve and are used by extension to degrade women and to belittle women and to portray women as being inherently deficient. This all comes from the story from the Bible, from Genesis, that Hawa was specifically created from Adam alayhi salam's rib. And by extension, it finds its way in our tradition as well. The Prophet ﷺ never said that Eve was specifically created from the rib of Adam alayhi salam. So number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تقويب, That we have created man in the best creation. Both men and women were created without deficiency. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ We have honored all of the children of Adam alayhi salam. That's to be established that wherever this discussion goes, that men and women were created in the same fashion, they are both created with the same level of completeness. Which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ وَأُنْثَى وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَبَائِلَ لِتَعَارَفُ That we have created you first and foremost from male and female, and then made you nations and tribes. So Allah addresses misogynism or sexism as well as racism. In fact, he addresses sexism before racism. And at the end of it all, إِنَّ أَكْرَمَكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْقَاكُمْ The most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the one who has the most taqwa, which is unseen, it's in the heart. So no matter what your gender is or what your race is, you have the same ability to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to have a sense of completeness. Now, what is the creation of Hawa? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنَّا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ وَأُنْثَى But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says that He created you مِنْ نَفْسٍ وَاحِدًا In the first ayah of Surah An-Nisa وَخَلَقَ مِنْهَا زَوْجَهَا And He created from it its spouse. What is it? What is مِنْهَا? The majority of the scholars say that Hawa, she was extracted and created from Adam alayhi salam, which is again her name because she was created from something that was high, something that was living. Some of the scholars say minha refers to the same type of dirt that Adam Islam was created from. It's an open difference of opinion and discussion, and there is really nothing conclusive in that regard. What we do have is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, where the Prophet Islam says the woman was created from the rib. He doesn't specify hawa. He simply says the woman was created from the rib. Was the Prophet Islam employing an analogy? Or was the Prophet ﷺ speaking literally? In one of the narrations in Bukhari as well, it's also completely authentic. The Prophet ﷺ says, Al-mar'atu kal dul'i That the woman is like the rib. In aqamtaha kasartaha That if you try to straighten it, you will break it. What is the context of this hadith? This hadith is actually very beautiful. Because number one, it's from the khutbah of the Prophet ﷺ in Arafah. The Prophet ﷺ's farewell hajj. So the Prophet ﷺ says, أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِسْتَوْسُوا بِالنِّسَاءِ خَيْرًا O people, treat your wives well. فَإِنَّ الْمَرْأَةَ خُلِقَتْ مِنْ ضِلَعٍ For verily the woman was created from a rib. وَإِنَّ أَعْوَجَ شَيْئًا فِي الضِلَعِ أَعْلَاهُ And the most bent part of the rib is the top of it. He did not say that the woman is the most bent part of the rib or that she's created from the most crooked part of the rib. He simply said the most crooked part of the rib is the top of it. If you try to straighten it, you will break it. And if you leave it, it will remain in its place. So he said, Act kindly, deal kindly with your wives. Not a single explanation of this hadith is that the woman is inherently deficient as opposed to the man. That she's bent, that she's crooked. It goes to the general idea of assigning evil to Eve and to women in general that women are inherently deficient or crooked and evil. This is not a concept in Islam. What was the Prophet ﷺ saying? Either he was being literal and saying that the woman was created from the rib, not the most crooked part, but that she was created from the rib. And he simply went on to explain what the most crooked or what the most bent part of the rib was. Or the Prophet ﷺ was using an analogy. Most of the scholars said he was using an analogy. Imam al-Nawi rahimahullah, in the explanation of the hadith, he says the Prophet ﷺ was addressing the impatience that men had with their wives in trying to make them exactly as they wanted them to be. You are supposed to act like this, you're supposed to do this, you're supposed to do that. Addressing all of their habits, addressing everything. We're not talking about haram and addressing things that are forbidden. But the idea of trying to mold your wife into exactly what you want her to be. The Prophet ﷺ is saying, look, you're not going to get the perfect woman. Just like you're not the perfect man. 
and he was using the example of the rib. If you took a rib and you tried to just straighten it out like that, you're going to end up breaking someone and killing yourself. In a hadith in Muslim, he said, so leave it bent and that is better for you. Otherwise, if you break it, it is divorce. So the Prophet was saying breaking it is divorce. Some of the scholars, they said that the woman's nature is more complex than the man's nature. And that's not to buy into this concept that women are crazy human beings and insane and emotional wrecks and men are the ones that are logical and know what they're doing. No, but that the nature of the man and the woman is different. And men have a difficult time understanding that. And the Prophet ﷺ is saying not to interfere with that and not to pretend like you understand everything because there are certainly going to be gaps here. You're not going to be able to understand. The third one, which I find very beautiful, was that the woman has been created in a way to protect the vital organs, the way that the rib protects certain things. And to try to change that might endanger those organs. One of the Imams, he said that a lot of times the things that we dislike in our spouses are actually the things that are protecting the marriage and protecting the household. Which is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Asa an takrahu shay, you might dislike something. And Allah puts much blessing in the very quality that you dislike. So there are certain qualities that you might not like about your spouse, but they're what's holding things down. That's what's keeping everything in its place. And those things actually have a lot of khayr in them. And so the message of this hadith is not to say that women are crooked ribs or inherently crooked. That's not the understanding of the hadith. The Prophet ﷺ was using an example. He was saying, don't try to change your wife and mold her into what you want her to be. Understand, be compassionate. We all have our deficiencies and we shouldn't expect our spouses to be perfect. Instead, we should mutually try to deal with those deficiencies, grow together in good and in patience and all that is pleasing. Allahumma ameen.